The Battle of Waynesboro was the final battle of the Valley Campaign during the American Civil War and led to the total destruction of the Confederate Army of the Shenandoah, led by Lieutenant General Drew Bull Early. Over the years, people have claimed to encounter ghost soldiers on the battlefield site and the cemetery, which is where the battlefield was, and it's said to be especially haunted. Today, let's take a look at the battle and claims of paranormal activity. In late February 1865, Union General Philip Sheridan was making his way through the Shenandoah Valley to cut off reinforcements and supplies that were aiding Confederate General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Lee dispatched Lieutenant General Jubal Early to stop Sheridan and push him back north towards Winchester. Early had a much smaller force, and Sheridan was pretty confident in his campaign going into the battle, and it helped that he had a capable cavalry commander under him by the name of General George Armstrong Custer. Custer's division had encountered the Confederates near Mount Crawford, and he and Sheridan were eager to deal a fatal blow to Early's army. Their chance would come on March 2, 1865. On the morning of March 2, Custer and his men skirmished with men of the 36th Virginia Infantry near Fishersville, Virginia, just a few miles away from Waynesboro, and they were able to drive them back to the Confederate lines in Waynesboro. Early deployed his men in a single battle line with major artillery support, but his men were not the quality of troops the Shenandoah Army was used to having. Early made a fatal mistake when he assumed that the dense woods to the left of his line would be impenetrable for soldiers to get through, and this would come back to haunt him later. He also made another mistake when he only gave his army two routes of retreat, and both of them were through somewhat narrow passages over the South River. An artillery duel began shortly after Custer's men arrived at the town's outskirts at about 2 p.m. Custer sent a few brigades forward to try and find a weak point in the Confederate line, and when Custer learned of the gap between the Confederate left flank and the South River, recognizing that he could launch a flanking maneuver and it would also spare him major casualties and it would save him from a head-on attack, he ordered Colonel Alexander Cummings McCorder Pennington Jr. to take three regiments from his 1st Brigade to attack the Confederate flank. At 3.30 p.m., the battle began with an artillery duel between the two sides. Custer then sent a flanking force under Pennington to make their way through the woods to flank the Confederate line. These men were armed with Spencer repeating rifles and were able to easily make their way through the dense brush. Just as the Confederates were reforming to face this new threat, Wells and Cape Hart's brigades rushed the Confederate center. In a matter of minutes, the Confederate army was in a complete rout. Early himself, with about 15 of his staff, escaped through Rockfish Gap. His entire army was either captured or scattered across the countryside, never again to form an effective fighting force. At the end of the fight, the Union suffered around nine casualties, and the entire Confederate force was either killed, wounded, captured, or ran away. Fun fact, there were two medals of honor given to Union soldiers for heroics displayed during the quick battle that day. After the battle, many soldiers were buried in graveyards and cemeteries around town, and I even found a reference that people claimed to see ghost soldiers in town as early as the 1890s, although this could be a story meant to scare kids around a campfire. The main hauntings take place at two locations. The first location is the cemetery where the woods by the Confederate left flank was. Many people visiting the cemetery claim to spell gunpowder and see ghost soldiers walking around the grounds as if they're looking for their fellow soldiers. The other haunted location is the Plum House in town. The house was there during the battle, and it also served as a field hospital and officer's quarters after the battle. The house is currently a museum, and people claim to see ghost soldiers in and around the house, and hear footsteps of nurses rushing to wounded men, as well as footsteps of officers pacing around the old meeting rooms. Thank you all for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did and leave a comment on your thoughts about not just this haunting, but other Civil War haunts. And have you ever encountered a ghost soldier? If so, what was that like? Let us know below. But I hope you all have a good rest of your day. And from Fight Paranormal, I'll see y'all later.